Hi, this is Sally Morgan, physical therapist, craniosacral therapist, and Tellington T Touch practitioner for animals and people. And this is Tristan, who is a corgi. And this is an episode of Conversations with a Corgi. Number 40, it's a big episode, milestone. And today we're going to continue our talk about some T-Touch equipment that you have available to use with your dog or your horse or your cat or your rabbit. And we're not going to make this a terribly long talk because I know a lot of people are missing it. I had a meeting this morning where I made some really good, interesting connections. Um, so this will be a shorter video and hopefully people will find it later. Today I'm going to talk about one of the most important pieces of equipment we have. Tristan's walking off the stage. <laughs> he knows I need to see his whole body for this. Um, in the world of T-Touch, we have one really, really important uh, piece of equipment besides our hands and our breath and our intention and things coming from us. And that is our wand. Can you sit down, please? Can you have a seat? <laughs> and this is, as you can see, it has a little button on one end and it's a very long... Um, dressage whip basically it's this is a German dressage whip and we've been using these this is four foot long this one and we've been using these with T-touch work from the beginning with the horses we have a white one so that the horses can see it when you think about if you are not a rider person riding a horse you usually imagine the whip being black and that is not easy for horses to see and it scares them. So you already have them in that fight flight response as soon as they see a black whip, even if it's short, no matter what size it is. It's frightening because they don't know where it is on their body and how it's gonna to touch them. So we have used these long white wands for a long time so that the horse can see it and know where it is around their body and feel safe. We use it to give them visual cues and also physical cues about what we'd like them to do. You can use the wand to do T-touches with the button end. I have used the button end to do T-touches on cats, dogs, rabbits, horses. It's really useful if you can't get close to an animal. I've even used it to work with some wild animals, including the baby bunnies that are born in my garden every year. And so, you can get these wands from the T-Touch website, and I'll just tell you a few stories about the wand. Um, I travel a bit by planes, used to be quite a bit more, and I always include a section about T-Touch in my craniosacral classes, and I also teach T-Touch classes around the country, and of course I need to bring a wand with me. They don't fold very well into a suitcase, and so when I've been going through the airport check-in, even in these different times that we live in now at the airport, people are always questioning whether this could be a weapon. Luckily, it's thin enough, it would be unlikely to hide something inside of it, but the buttons do come off, and you can show people what's inside, and people ask you, what is that and what is it for? And I have always said, it's a magic wand because I do magic with animals, and then I run it over the person's body lightly and they see that it's not a weapon and that it's not anywhere in my mind as a weapon. And I've had people say in the airport, isn't that a whip? And I say, no, 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 it's a wand. We use it to give a specific kind of clear um, direction or information to an animal. It is not used as a whip or a weapon. And when I've taught, I've had the great pleasure and, and sometimes frustration of teaching T-Touch classes exclusively to children under 12. I was working at a big horse farm. We had a whole lot of kids come on Saturday mornings and I was doing some T-Touch clinics with them because I thought it would be so great for them. And when I handed out the wands for them to work with, I've even told them, this is your magic wand. You can use it to make someone a fairy and tap them on the head, or you can use it to give information to your horse today or to your partner but these are your magic wands and no kids were running around hitting each other. It's amazing the difference it makes when you tell someone this is a magic wand and not a whip. It changes their entire perception about how they're gonna work with it. And in that way, our intention as T-Touch practitioners and healers in general can go a long way to changing how this uh, piece of equipment is used. The other important thing about it is you can see, Tristan likes how it tastes, it doesn't, bend very much and on the end it's not very much what we would call whippy it's very stiff so that way when you make a connection with it with an animal it doesn't bounce on and off of them 
and it helps make a straightforward connection with the animal. So how would I use this with a horse? We use it to give them a signal. Like when, we want, when we're walking, we hold it in front of them where they can see it, you know, five or six feet ahead of their nose. And we'll say, and ho, oh, and give them a little signal to stop. And we give them the and as we go up with the wand to ask them to pay attention, we're gonna do something. And then the whoa, as we come down and breathe out. And the horse will almost always stop squarely. It's amazing, and even when I was doing dressage with my horses at a very high level, you get a lot of points on your halts. And if they're square and even, and the horse is collected and coming under himself properly and you're sitting straight, you can get a lot of points in doing what I think is fairly easy, but apparently it's fairly difficult because a lot of people struggle with their halts. And so I practiced holding the wand in my hand as I was riding, and I would say to my horse as I'm coming down the center line, and, Oh, and bring the wand down. They could see it out the side of their eyes and they would know that we were going to halt and it would give them a minute to collect their body and to get ready for the halt so that as they were trotting, they would go one, two, three, four and stop square. We can also do this with our dogs. So if I'm walking and Tristan's down here and I have him on a harness, I can say and wait and Tristan will stop and we use it in the corners of the labyrinth. I can bring it in front of him and say and walk and then open the door and invite him to come forward and let's go and wait. Now, of course, he's sitting on a table. He can't do coming or stopping at the moment. He's just sitting here patiently. The other important thing we can use this for is to give them a sense of space around them and protection. So if he's nervous around another dog coming near him, I can make a little wall here and say, okay, it's all right. Watch here what we're gonna be doing. And it's impossible to resist watching the wand when you use it properly. Now, in the old days, when we were doing the and ho, some people were waving it like this in front of the horse. We called that, you know, like windshield wipers that were broken. And that does not make you stop. That makes you go, oh, are they going to hit me with it? Because it's out of control. So we get much more effectiveness with just a tiny movement going and wait and let's go and bring it in front of them. Now this is a four foot wand. We have a slightly shorter size that we use for most of the dog work. This one's brown so you can see the difference. It's about six inches or eight inches shorter than the white one. And it's shorter because if you're working with like a Labrador, um, the white one will be so long that you'll have to be so far from the dog to work with it. But my dog is really short and so I often use the longer wands with him. I love this wand because it's orange like my corgis. And when they first came out, I was really fortunate that Robin, Linda's sister, um, sent me one of these orange wands to use with my dog then, Winston, specifically. And sadly, I was at a centered riding training and lent my wand to someone and it disappeared. And boy, the people at that place, it was where Sally Swift herself actually was working and teaching lessons. I was devastated. I was so attached to that wand by then. Uh, Winston had crossed the Rainbow Bridge and I had Comet. And I really missed my chestnut colored wand. I was so attached to it. And then lo and behold, I mentioned this at some point to Robin at um, a Tea Touch celebration, I think. And so now I have three brand new ones that I've had for many years now and I love them so much. So I like to use the chestnut wand with my dog because it always reminds me of Winston. But, you know, it's not as good as the white one. They can't see it as easily. And, you know, it's just different. It's a different quality. Because I love it so much, I use it with my dogs in the yard when I'm just playing with them outside on the confidence course. So the thing that you need to know about the wand is that it's an extension of your arm. It's like we talk about putting your heart in your hand. Let that be the connection with your animal. So if Tristan were a scared animal in a shelter, maybe a little kitty in a cage, I could just reach in with the button end and make like little circle and a quarter. Good boy for sitting up so we can see. And I can do that lightly in his fuzz and make a really good connection. Or I can go a little more pressure so that I'm actually doing a circle and a quarter on his skin. And if you're not making that connection through the fur, you're kind of tickling the animal. That can be useful sometimes, 
but generally you want to make a connection with this frightened animal in a cage. And so using this button end is good. Now I had a friend who had a cat. She asked me to work with the cat. And the cat was a bit um, rascally. She would often paw at the person with her claws and uh, growl with her teeth. And the person was actually terrified of the cat. She was a little tiny cute cat. And the cat had gotten around the house and was living like under a bureau and wouldn't come out. And they couldn't catch her and it was a real problem and they needed to know how to work with the cat. So they were able to confine her to this one room and pretty much she was living in there. But when I saw how the person who owned the cat was petting her, she would be pet, pet, pull her hand away, pet, pet, pull her hand away, which was actually to a cat a really good invitation to say, let's play, let's start pawing at me. And because she was so afraid when the cat started to use her nails, the cat escalated that into a bit of an attack mode. So this was a bit of a dangerous kitty for someone. I, of course, went in there with some pretty good gloves on so that she could scratch me and I wouldn't pull my hand away and the button end of my wand. And I just reached under the bureau and I did a few circle and a quarter in the air in front of the kitty and gradually got my wand closer until I was doing a circle and a quarter on the kitty. And I did that for a little while and then I used this end of the wand, which is very appealing to a kitty. And I just did some little scritchy motions coming out from under the bureau and she'd come forward a little bit more and then I'd use the button end of the wand and do a circle and a quarter and I actually had two wands with me so I didn't have to keep flipping them and get her too excited so I would do another circle and a quarter and then scratch her out a little bit more until she was sitting with her front end out from under the bureau and then I was able to use the button end of the wand and do a lot more tea touches stroking her whiskers saying hi and letting her mark the wand and stroking her with it and doing some circular tea touches and after not too long maybe a half an hour I was able to stroke that cat with my glove and keep doing tea touches on her with the wand and make a really big change in her relationship to people and the cat loving people that lived in the house that were not the cat's owner um, had no problem being calm when the cat was trying to scratch them and I asked them to wear a glove if they were at all nervous and to just start learning to love that cat and pet her and stroke her in a kind way instead of pulling their hand away all the time. So without the wand, that would have been a really difficult um, situation for me to work with because I would have had to stick my hand under there. It would have been threatening to the cat, plus my hand had a glove on. It's a lot easier to just use this wand, which is much less threatening than a stuffed glove on the end. And of course they do use gloved hands on sticks to work with you know shelter dogs and dogs that are really frightened and threatened and that is probably better than sticking your arm in there but it is a scary thing i mean you still have to keep the same same ideas in mind not coming at the animal this way but instead this way because that's that's an offering of i'm here to help you i you can feel safe with me this is you don't know what I'm going to do. This is threatening. I could push you away. I could grab you. But this is very inoff inoffensive. It's a very kind way to reach out to an animal. And so the wand, as an extension of your heart into your hand, into the wand, is a really nice way to work with an animal who's been really frightened. And then we can use the soft end of the wand to stroke the dog or the kitty or the horse. And can you stand up, please, Biss? Come up, come up. I want to show your legs. Come on, let's see those sexy feet. Up, come on, up. Come on, good boy. Oh, oh, and on the table. <laughs> so with a, a bigger animal, you can hardly see this on him, but if he were standing on the ground, I'd be stroking the wand down his legs. And then I can even just do a stroke on each of his four little paws his little nails to connect him to the ground. With horses, we actually will use the button end and tap the hoof to ground them. And you can do that with a dog very gently. It's really too much for Tristan because his feet are so little and cute. But I certainly will use the soft end to just give him a little tap on the tootsie. And this is one of the things I've used with him. He has a teeter-totter. He loves running up that thing, waiting for it to slap down and then trotting off the end. And in agility, your dog has to um, touch a certain portion at the end of it before they jump off. And to teach him that, I have used the soft end of the wand 
just tapping his little feet and putting some treats on the end so that he always touches that part before he jumps off. And he is so good now. He tears around the yard and he'll come running at that thing at top speed. We should really go in an agility fun day sometime. <laughs> and then he goes up and it's so interesting watching him reorganize at the top, waiting for it to slap down and then running really fast and pausing a minute as he jumps off the end. So it's been really effective for me, helping him be aware of where his feet are and connecting him to his equipment when we need it. It's a good thing to use when you're working with your dog over different surfaces. In the confidence course out in the yard, you can, or in your house, you can use different surfaces, which we'll have a whole video about what that means. But to help them be familiar with those new surfaces, you can stroke their legs and feet with the wand. You can tap the thing you would like them to walk onto. You can scratch the wand on the top of it to show them that it's safe. And then you can keep pulling the wand along in front of him if you need the dog to feel um, some sense of direction as you're bringing them across that new um, surface on the confidence course. So the wand, as much as you think, oh, I have a cat, or I have a dog, I have a rabbit, I don't really need a riding whip. <laughs> but in fact, the wand is a magic piece of equipment that we use in T-Touch, and it is invaluable. I, I can't tell you how hard it is for me if I'm ever somewhere doing a T-Touch talk and I don't have a wand with me to that and I always keep a few in the car or the truck that I have but you know it's really an essential item for us to make a connection with animals and also with people when you're working with a group of people and dogs you may have someone like me sometimes who starts to limp to one side and they're pulling their dog off balance using the wand on their legs just stroking them down the sides connecting their feet maybe tapping their shoe with the button end of the wand can really help ground a person and change how they're walking with their dog and how they're holding their balance. Of course, we have many other things that we would use, including wraps to help even out a person walking with their dog. Um, but the wand is a really valuable, valuable resource. And I can't encourage you enough to consider having one to use with your work with animals, with T-Touch, with your own dog. You can really do a lot with a wand to help your animal's confidence and to connect with animals in a shelter. A friend of mine, Deb Bauer, works at a shelter and she's a T-Touch practitioner and she has lots of cats there. And I know that a wand is in her office, maybe five, <laughs> to help her with some of the shelter animals that come in because it is a really safe way for you to keep your distance from an animal and make a deep connection with them so that you can get closer to them to help them with whatever they need. So the wand is and a very important part of T-Touch work, and it's one of our most important pieces of equipment. I have to say, I was at a big horse expo here years ago, and I was talking to a famous cowboy horse trainer who uses a long white stick, it's metal, with a rope on the end, maybe a foot long, hanging off with their horses. And I said, oh, it's a little bit like a T-Touch wand, isn't it? And he said, with absolutely no apology. Oh, I stole that. You people are out there waving those wands around like it's magic or something. And I knew that it was working. So I wanted to make something like that. And so that's what I did. And mine's better because of all the things he said. It had a rope on it and it was stiffer. But it, you know, I went to Linda and I said, what do you think of this? And the bottom line is they took a piece of equipment that we're using super effectively and it has brought benefit to some of the horses they work with. Now, not everything they do with it is certainly like what we would do with it. And it's not totally like a wand, but it has been helpful to horses. And so, you know, give that guy a pat on the back and say, thank you for stealing this piece of information from us because it has helped horses and it has changed how people are with their animals. And so to that end, you know, fine. But it's a very different thing than this. It's not soft. It's stiffer. It actually hurts when it's going down your leg. If you stroke yourself with this wand and you come to like a bump in the fabric like I have right here and it slides over, it comes back with a connection. And if you had something metal, it would like slap down and it would hurt you. So this just goes over a bump in the horse's body or the dog's fur and it just keeps that connection. And it actually just stroking yourself with the wand. It's giving me goosebumps right now because it feels so interesting and different and connected and light. And it really, you can, the hair, as I've said many times, is a direct 
connection to the central nervous system. And using the wand, stroking the hair, is a really good way to connect with the central nervous system. If you have a really stressed and anxious dog spinning at the end of a leash, stroking with the wand can really help calm him down and bring him back into his body and bring him to a place where he can focus and listen and respond instead of react. And as I said, it's really been valuable working with cats or bunnies that have been abused and mishandled to be able to reach them and show them that they can trust us, some of us. <laughs> so the wand is one of my most valuable pieces of Tellington Tea Touch equipment. I have probably 20 of them. And I have one more story about wands to tell you. This is going much longer than I had planned. I was at um, one of my early Tea Touch clinics and the people brought me one of the hardest horses that they had, which was a stallion named Bubba. And you could hear them, he was off the track, he had been pin fired, he had little holes in his legs from that experience, which they say makes the bones stronger, but that was the least of Bubba's problems. Um, he had been really abrasively handled, excuse me, Bisky. <laughs> and so the person that owned him was in the stall getting him, you could hear her screaming like, stop that, quit it, car, you know, everything that would not make you relax and calm. And she finally gets a chain over his nose and you can hear him rearing and snorting and banging and banging into the walls and prancing down the aisle as, you know, hooves on the pavement with the horseshoes, sparks were flying. People were jumping quickly up out of their chairs to get out of the way when he came in the ring because they were afraid of him. And he was leaping and rearing and plunging. And I just watched him come in and I thought, oh my God, what has happened to you? How can I help you? And I looked him deeply in the eye and took a deep breath and he calmed for a second and then he started pitching again. So I pulled out one wand and he was afraid of it. A lot of horses are afraid of whips and they should be because of how they've been handled. And he reared up and sort of ran backwards a little bit. And I took another deep breath. And of course the person is shanking him and yelling, quit it. So I ended up getting four wands. They weren't brown, they were all white two in each hand like this, and I put them around his front and his hind quarters and just caressed him and took a deep breath in and a breath out as I attached the wands on his body. And he just took a big breath and settled into his feet and connected to the earth. And I asked the person to just throw the lead rope over his neck and she did. And he stood there like a gentleman for the entire time I demonstrated body work with him and I uh, became very attached to this horse. I started him again, I did ground driving with him, I taught him pretty high level dressage in long lines and uh, another girl at the barn was a really talented jumper rider and she was teaching him jumping and in a halter. I mean the horse was amazingly talented. He ended up getting sold to a young man who did not gelt him and he was showing him in Vermont at three days or two day combined events, whatever he was going to. And um, at some point, maybe the second year in, one of the officials noticed the horse was a stallion and the kid wasn't old enough to be riding a stallion at an AHSA sanctioned show yet. And so instead of gelding the horse, who was like 10 at that point, the kid just said, well, you know what? I'll just not show until I'm old enough to ride him as a stallion. So that horse ended up having a good life, but that connection I made in that moment changed that horse's life. And I could not have done it without these wands because he was very dangerous. His feet were flying in every direction. I could not get that close to him safely. And part of it was being confident in my safety. You know, I had to be confident that this was gonna work. And I had a clear intention that he was gonna be able to breathe and calm down. And I was saying in my mind to him, who hurt you? I will never hurt you. You can trust me. You're safe now. I will take care of you. And I mean, the look in that horse's eye, I will never forget. And just because I had four wands and people in the audience were like, oh my God, she had one whip. What is she doing holding four? He's terrified. It wasn't about whips. It was about wands. It was about connection. It was about grounding. It was about breathing. It was about appreciating his beauty and what he had been through in his life and meeting him at that place where he was in his heart trying so hard to do what people wanted and saying, I appreciate you. And so that's how powerful these wands are. They can change your experience with an animal and change an animal's experience with his world forever, forever. I rode that horse all over those hills bareback with a halter on him and 
He was a wonderful horse. You can read more about him in my book, Dances of the Heart, Connecting with Animals. So thank you for joining us today for a talk about T-Touch wands. I have some similar things I use, like a wand, which we'll talk about another day. Um, and they are really useful. And lots of T-Touch practitioners have come up with other alternatives when they haven't had a wand or if they have an animal that's um, really afraid or if they need something softer. So please um, try to get a T-Touch wand from the website, ttouch.com. They have lots of them. And they come in a nice big um, cardboard container that you can store them in. And I even have one that I decorated with sparkles because it is my magic wand. The other important thing you need to know about your key touch wand is a lot of people who have horses in particular will stand putting the soft end into the ground and poking it and things. And that's not very good to do your wand. It actually will um, break the end of it off eventually and wear it out. And some of mine that have been to lots and lots of clinics over the years, you know, 50, 100 clinics, have lost part of their little nose on the end and I've had to replace it. I've actually been fortunate to use a fishing line that I find on the beach in pretty colors, you know, pink, green, blue, that's the same kind of braided nylon. And I've been able to weave it in so that it has almost the same feel, but it's not the same as the beginning of what the wand was like because the connection is different when you attach a new piece. No matter how pretty it is, it's not the same. So get your wand, enjoy it. Don't lose the button on the end. They do sell replacements, so don't take it off because that loosens it. And try to preserve the nice little fuzzy bit on the end because that's an important part of how you can use it with your animals. This is Sally Morgan and Tristan Corgi for another episode of Conversations with a Corgi. And today we've been talking about Tellington T-Touch wands. Thanks for joining us at this unusual hour after my business meeting this morning. And we will be back tomorrow morning at 825 to talk more about some of the equipment we use in Tellington T-Touch and how you can enhance your relationship with the animals in your life. Thank you for joining us.